Hi everyone, this is KK from KK's Priest, and you're listening to Block of Rock, so crank it up. Willkommen bei The Block of Rock, deinem Hard Rock und Heavy Metal Podcast Musikmagazin. Ich bin Uwe Lerch und ich nehme dich Backstage mit zu den Rockstars. Natürlich quatschen wir über die Musik, die uns alle verbindet, über neue Platten, über Livepläne und was früher so war. Aber wir sprechen auch über die Menschen dahinter, was hat sie inspiriert und motiviert und welche Rockstar-Tipps haben sie für dich da draußen. In den Show Notes, das ist die Beschreibung zu dieser Episode, über die du das hier gerade hörst, findest du einen zentralen Link für alle weiteren Informationen, der dich aber auch in meine offizielle Facebook-Gruppe führt. Ich würde mich freuen, wenn wir uns hier kennenlernen. Bist du nun am Start? Na dann komm doch mit! Einer der Oberpriester der Rock-History ist wieder da. K.K. Downing war der Inbegriff des Heavy-Metal-Gitarristen. Gemeinsam mit Glenn Tipton bildete er bei den Metal-Gods Judas Priest über 40 Jahre eines der besten Seitenduos der Geschichte. Bis man sich 2010 im Streit oder im Missverständnis trennte, so genau lässt sich das heute nicht mehr nachvollziehen. Während Judas Priest ohne K.K. mit rund erneuerten Gitarrenmannschaft weitermachten, wurde es relativ still um den blonden Seitenhexer an der Flying V. Viele Jahre tauchte er in der Versenkung ab, wo dann auch auf allen Seiten einiges an schmutziger Wäsche gewaschen wurde. Vor einiger Zeit machte er von sich reden, dass er in Wolverhampton, nordwestlich von Birmingham, einen Rockclub namens KK Steel Mill eröffnet hat, der jedoch während der Pandemie wie alle Läden geschlossen war. Nun ist er aber musikalisch wieder da und hat frisches Blut geleckt mit einer neuen Formation, KK's Priest. An seiner Seite am Mikrofon Tim Ripper Owens, den wir noch als Rob Helford Ersatz bei Judas Priest kennen. Kurzfristig gab es die Chance auf einen Call, eine Woche vor Veröffentlichung seines neuen Albums Sermons of the Sinner und wenige Minuten, nachdem er das dazugehörige Vinyl selbst erhalten hatte und mir dieses wie ein Fan stolz in der Kamera präsentierte. Bevor wir darüber sprachen, musste ich ihm aber nochmal beichten, dass er mich, mit Judas Priest, zum Metal-Fan gemacht hat und einige Jahre später durch seine markante Optik mit der Flying V das erste Rock Hard Logo inspiriert hat welches Holger Stratmann damals handgezeichnet hat für die ersten vier Ausgaben. Also lasst uns beten. Rupa, how you doing? How you doing, KK? Nice to hey, see you. Very, very good, nice to see you too. So, at first I would start with a confession. KK, without you, I wouldn't be here, because 21st of November in 79, you opened for ACDC in my hometown, Dortmund. I was a, oh. I was a 14 year old hard rock fan kid. But when Priest opened that night, I turned to, into a metalhead. So thank you very much. I remember the tour so well. It was wonderful, wonderful. ACDC, the mighty guys, they, they treated us so well. It was such a pleasure to do, fond memories. I can imagine. This concert also led me into the business because a couple of years later in 83, I started my first magazine, which you probably know later, called Rock Heart. Yes, of course. And I'm That the co-founder of Rock Heart and it was you as a silhouette on the front. Oh, yeah, nice. Thank you very much. And at that time, you also inspired a lot of German musicians because lots of uh, German artists like Wolf Hoffmann and Doro, by the way, they supported you also on the initial German tours. They told me that uh, you, especially you and the guitarist, uh, really inspired the German metal scene. Yeah, Were you aware of this? I, I wasn't, but I, I, I became aware of... of uh, obviously, I was a big Scorpions fan, you know, um, from day one. And yeah, and it was, it's been great really, because as you say, you know, accept and they open it. They supported us also in the UK. We had great tour with Warlock. That was fantastic, you know, so, and, and yeah, and of course, of course, Germany is a massive stronghold in the world, you know, for heavy rock and metal, you know, over the decade. It's, it's always a, a pleasure to come and play for you guys, you know. 
and uh, and hopefully we can get back to Dortmund once again as soon as we possibly can. That's that what we hope. Out. I also attended the Rock Pop TV show in '83 where you played with Ozzy and the Scorpions and made the one the big TV Rock Pop festival in '83 where you came oh, with the Defenders oh, tour. Yeah, that was a wonderful gig, a wonderful show. Yeah, yeah, wonderful to be there. There was everybody there. All the bands were there. It was like the US Festival in Germany. So all the yeah. big bands at that time. Yeah, absolutely. But probably even more bands because of, we had uh, Iron Maiden was there. You know, I mean, it was... Uh, yeah, it was Crocos, Quiet Riot, Scorpions, Maiden. So one of the yeah. best. Yeah, yeah, that's so right. Let's, let's But let's look into the present and of course into the future. We don't want to talk about too much about the past because the funny thing is we were just talking about German bands. Uh, two of the best German bands are playing in your club, the KK Steel Mill, very short. Michael Schenker and Doro are coming to your place. Yes, and I'm going to be there. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, so you're still running not, the club. Yeah, like I say, I'm the uh, ambassador for the venue. It's a big venue, holds about 3,000. It's, it's very good. But that's going to be a fantastic night. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing seeing the guys again and uh, and seeing them play. Um, wonderful. Can't wait. Yeah, I got invited by our dear friend Brian Tetler from Diamond Head, who's going to play in February with the Tigers and Rock Goddess. So I might come over to visit your place. Yeah, well, I'll come to the show as well. That's right. But KK, you've got another thing coming. The new band, KK's Priest. So tell me yeah. about this. Uh, yeah, well, I'd like to say I have just been delivered the album. So I'm the same as the fans. I just got this and I'm really excited. Just half an hour ago, it was it was delivered by the UPS band. So I got some some copies, you know, but I didn't have any before then, apart from studio copies, you know, but... Uh, It's not like having the finished thing in the hands. It's a really good feeling, you know. It's like a new birth. Yeah, it's good. And I like feeling that. I'm, it's like I'm the same as the fans. We have to wait to get ours delivered. So what did you motivate most to put on the strap for your Flying V and get back to the stage? Was it the recording yeah. of doing the option going live? All of them meeting with friends, other bands? Yeah, it just came about towards the end of 2019. I got invited to play with Ross the Boss, a few songs at the festival. And then I got invited to play with uh, Dave Ellison Band at the Steel Mill. And that just went crazy because it, it, I was supposed to be just doing two songs, you know, with, with Dave, with the Dave Ellison Band, just because I'm local. And uh, he had my phone number. And um, and then somebody says, oh, yeah, let's get Tim over and, oh, let's call Les Dinks. And, and then we ended up playing for like an hour. And uh, But it was very, very cool. It was a wonderful experience and very unique. We didn't have, again, we did, We had very little rehearsal. The guys flew in the day before. We had one run through that night and then we played the show the next night. Um, but, but yeah, and so, and then a month later, Christmas Day, pretty much Christmas Day, 2019, I thought, I'll sit down and shut myself away because I'm not keen on Christmas. I got a bit bored. I think, you know, because, um, and I'll, I'll see if I can come up with a, with an album and that's what I did. Perfect. And you teamed up with Ripper again. So what, how yeah, did absolutely. this, did you kept in contact throughout the years? Oh yes, yes, yeah. Ripper kept playing when he would come to the UK, you know, playing some shows with his band and the disciples of Dio. I would go along with me and AJ and hang out and say hello, you know. Of course, I had listened to the album already a couple of times throughout the week and the opener is called Incarnation and it's somehow the programmatic red line for me for KK for the last 50 years on the road. So it's an incarnation also of, of you. It is, yeah. It's actually, it is my voice. It is actually my really? voice. Yeah. <laughs> really? So, and when I listen yeah. to the first tracks, Hellfire, Thunderbolt and of course the title track, Sermons of the Cinder, it really starts where... Somehow the period of uh, Painkiller and of course the albums with Ripper ended somehow. So we really start from there with the new tracks. It really pushes the button. Yeah, I wanted to, um, you know, for me, one of the great albums in Judas Priest um, was um, Defenders of the Faith because the first four tracks are just amazing. It's relentless and it's got energy and, you know, and I wanted to capture some of that and I thought that that would be good. And, um, you know, so in particular, the, the opening tracks, you know, kind of in between the eyes, as they say, you know, 
It's like, it's one of these. So um, I thought that that was the way to go. I wanted to, I'm back, the band, we're serious about this, you know, listen up, you know. And, and yeah, it worked out great. You know, I like the energy in all of the album. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with it. You can be happy. It's such a great one. Another fave of mine on the album is Brothers of the Road. It's like, a, you know, the battle song of the new band. Yeah, yeah, because I was thinking about it and I thought it had so many meanings for me. But uh, one of the... Uh, and there's quite a lot of ambiguity about quite a lot of the album, including the album cover, you know. Uh, is this me or is it me in the past? Is it me now or is it me in the future? Or is it somebody else? But all of that will be revealed, you know. Um, but yeah, Brothers of the Road, I was kind of thinking that, you know, I mean, you know, it's kind of when we go to festivals and gigs and, and, and I've been away for 10 years and, and I'm thinking it's going to be great to meet my old friends. All the people you just mentioned you know doro and michael and, and the guys from etc and it would be great to go to festivals you know because we've all of us we've been brothers of the road all of our lives we just go round and round the world and we play all the gigs so that was one big sentiment that was in my mind with the songs you know and it, but the thing is it's something that we as i said before we're made to do but the thing is We're not made to enjoy it, but we just automatically do because, you know, it's, it's what we are there for and it's what we started. It's what we aspired, aspired to want it to be. We've been successful and so sure, we, you know, we enjoy it. And I'm looking forward to plenty more tours. And uh, again, for KK's Priest to be Brothers of the Road one more time. Welcome back. The new album is Metal Through and Through, which is also a song of the album, one of the great stomping tunes. And I think you also mentioned him already. It reminded me a lot to Manowar and Russell Boss tunes. Yeah, well, I think the, the whole song, because the whole song to me, I wanted to do something that was, you know, very, for lots of things. I wanted to write this song. I was imagining playing it live. I wanted plenty of audience participation. I wanted it to be a special moment, a, a massive rejoicement, you know, that we're back, we're playing for you again, we're together, we're as one, you know, and show my gratitude for to all the fans for being on this journey with us, you know. And so, and, and the thing is, this wonderful music, you know, that we've been a part of, you know, um, through the... 70s, the 80s, the 90s, and the 60s, uh, for me, you know, um, is something very, very special. And we don't care if people say it's old-fashioned. We don't care if people say it's done. We don't care, you know. And um, and I think for that reason, um, I would have to say Man of War, in particular, one of those bands that also share those sentiments with me because they don't care either because they're metal through and through. And, um, and like the audience, everybody I'm speaking to, you know, we started this together. We've been a part of it together. We've got a special relationship, relationship together. And we don't care what people say about our music. You know, it's what we know and it's what we love. It's what we're a part of and it's a part of us. And that was what the epic really, it didn't start off to be that long, but it just grew and grew. And so the emotions and the sentiments You know, and I want to play it live for everybody, you know, and I want everybody to sing We're Metal Through and Through, and it's going to be a great moment. I'm looking forward to hear this. What is the story behind Return of the Sentinel? Uh, of course, got, got a lot of quotes inside the song referring also to, to the Sentinel song. And it seems that the Sentinel himself has preserved your sound and magic and energy. Well, the thing is that, you know, I, I decided that, you know, I'm going to do, okay, I'm not going to be in the band Judas Priest, but I'm going to, I am a priest. I started off a priest. I've always been loyal. I never played with anyone else. I never wanted to, never did anything, solo project. You know, I started, I was a priest in 1969, and I was the happiest guy in the world to be in that band and to be a priest. And I'm thinking, you know, I deserve to retain that because I deserve to, uh, to retain my, my life, my life's work, my heritage, my legacy. 
and my songs and all of the hard work. And I wanted to bring some of that to take, to keep a hold of that, not to cut everything off, go and change my guitars, change my amplifiers, change my sound, change the way I hear things, change the way I produce, change the way I write songs. It's too late in the day. I'm 70 years old next month. So I wanted with Ripper and obviously, you know, to, to, to bring some of the nostalgia. And the thing is, you know, with great songs like The Sentinel, and maybe this is just a, a foot in, in, in the water, you know, um, to be able to, to, to not just leave that in a page of the history. I think there's so much in the past that deserve, deserve to be resurrected and to be continued and to be given another life, you know, and another story. Even though the Sentinel on this, the return of the Sentinel, he meets his demise, but he's been protecting this planet for a millennia, you know, but nothing lasts forever. But just as he's been resurrected here to play, to, to play his part one, once more, maybe there will be another Sentinel to take his place in the future. But that remains to be seen. We will see. You also re uh, released today a great epic video. It's a nine minute video of this track. It's, it's amazing. Oh, thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy it. I think it's great. I love it. It's a perfect end. But of course, we're looking forward to see you on stage with the band performing. So did you play with this formation already a show? No, we haven't. But what we did do when we were filming the videos, we were up there and rocking out. And Sean, the drummer, he was playing for real. It was so loud. And uh, But we got a great feeling as to how it's going to be. So as you can imagine, we're looking forward to getting into rehearsals, you know, as soon as we can, as soon as we can get the promoters to put some gigs together, we'll put a set list together, we'll start rehearsing, and uh, and, and we'll, all hell's going to let loose. And I'm going to be very curious which kind of classics you put in the set list. You will be delighted. You will be delighted when KK picks the songs that he's always wanted to play, but never did, never got to play that. You're going to be absolutely delighted, you know. And, and I'm not doing that just to sell tickets by playing obscure songs from Judas Priest. I'm not doing that. I'm doing that because they're in my heart and a big part of me, you know. And um, Your babies. But, yeah, because... Um, because we have a, a great options now. We'll be playing stuff from the Ripper years. We'll be playing stuff from KK's Priest, you know. And then we're just going to be turning the clock back and I'm going to be doing some stuff, you know, in the same way that I did even way back with Al Atkins and as a four-piece with Rob. So some of that's going to start to appear, you know, because I want to revisit that. You know, it's very nostalgic. I have some very old recordings from way back and I'll listen to them and think, you know, I'd like to do that again. Tell me about your new fellow X-Men, AJ. He looks like a younger you. He does. He's a younger version of me for sure, because he tells me that he started to get into metal when he saw us with Ripper Owen singing on the Jugulator tour in a gig in Birmingham, you know, in the mid-90s, and he was 17 years old. And he said he looked at me, and he wanted the Flying V, he, and he wanted to do what I was doing with my performance. And so he started to play the guitar, and now he's in his mid-30s. He's good at what he does. He performs well. You know, he sings. He's got a good voice, obviously. He's a really good guitar player now, and uh, and we work together really good. We get on really good as friends. I know his parents, you know, so we're serious about this. We're we're you know we're going to be playing the guitar in a serious way, and and I hope people um, listen to the album and think that I'm right about that, you know, uh, because uh, this album is pretty much Guitar City, really. <laughs> 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 so you just mentioned you're turning 7-0 in a couple of days. Uh, normal workers retired at that age and you're turning back the amps onto 11 and put the needle back on the record. Yeah, why not? Like I say, I waited. I was hanging around expecting to step back into my former role 
but those guys didn't want me. So, which is very sad, really, because, I mean, Rob left the band for 12, 14 years. Glenn did two solo albums with Cozy and John and, you know, and I gave everybody every opportunity and I was very pliable and allowed people to do whatever they wanted to do, you know, but they told the world I retired back in 2010. So if that's actually true, which it isn't, if that's actually true, why wouldn't they allow me to come back out of retirement if that's the only issue? So there's a question maybe lots of journalists would like to ask when they get to speak to those guys. But it's water under the bridge now. But like I say, in 2010, we were all going to retire. We were all ending the band. We were all about to embark on the farewell tour. I just decided I didn't want to do the farewell tour because I didn't feel it that I would enjoy it unless some things changed, but they weren't going to change. So something had to give. And I said, I'm not going to end my career doing a tour that I really don't think I'm going to enjoy. And the crazy thing, you've been a part now for 10 years from the big screens. And the moment you come back to light, coincidentally, your successor got major health problems. I don't believe in voodoo dolls or bad karma, but you, did you send any prayers to Richie that he's doing well? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, all I can do is I've been um, saying to people that, uh, you know, it's very sad. Everybody wishes Richie well and a speedy recovery. You know, um, it, it's, I think the guy's had over 20 shows um, still to compete. So hopefully the guys, when Richie um, recovers, they can get back out there. You know, because obviously I feel for the fans and, of course, Sabaton, uh, who was playing as well. It's a, it's a, it's a terrible thing, you know, but um, we can only wish Richie well. But I know he's young and, and he's strong and I'm sure that everything's going to be fine. Thank you. Coming back to records, you just showed me your new vinyl um, of the new album, which looks great. I like the artwork, by the way. It's a great one. Um, lots of people... They used this pandemic of a lockdown to re restructure the vinyl collection and maybe buying some new vinyls. Uh, also me, you know, I bought a new record player and now listening to old albums once again. How about you? Are you a vinyl enthusiast? Well, I have a vinyl collection. I assume. I, mean, I just can imagine somebody my age, you know, vinyls I was buying in the 60s, you know, so uh, and it's fantastic to get them out after so many years and you know you know the double gatefolds and you read and you see the pictures and it's so nostalgic you know it's so nostalgic how it all started because in the 60s you know I mean we didn't have anything we didn't even have rock all we had was blues and progressive blues we didn't even have rock there was rock and roll but that wasn't rock in the way that we knew it so the evolution you know came from Because when I started with, as a four-piece with Alan Atkins in Judas Priest, people, people called us a progressive blues band because they didn't know what style of music we played. There wasn't a name for it, you know. And over the years, we got, we got, we got called a progressive blues band, a rock band, a hot, then it was a hard rock band. And then, oh, Judas Priest, you're a heavy rock band. Oh, no, 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 you're a heavy metal band. You know, so, and it kept, and it, and it went on. But the thing is, what's wonderful that I like about it is the fact that all of that is in this record, <laughs> you know. And so, and that's why people tell me because, you know, if they, some of these, some of these can be heavy rock, hard rock, heavy metal, whatever. But that is my legacy in my lifetime. I've been on that journey. So there's going to be those ingredients just as they were in Judas Priest song. Let's pray you're coming back to the road, coming back to Germany as well. I'm looking forward to meeting you, my friends, and I wish you all the best with the new album. Thank you very much for taking well, the we, time. We're going to see you at the steel mill, make the journey, and we'll have, uh, we've got KK's Ale. You know, I'm, I'm not going to compare it with German beer, which is unbelievable. That, um, that's one reason I'm very much looking forward to coming back. Germany, that's for sure, to taste some fantastic beer. But we've got KK's Ale on there, on tap, and it is good. So try and make the journey. But if not, we'll definitely see you, not just in Dortmund, but 
all of the other wonderful cities that I would love to come back to and play some shows for you guys. Thank you. All the best to you. Bye bye. Goodbye, my friend. Thank all you the very best. Much. Stay healthy. Care, See you soon. Bye bye. Bye. <clears throat> Wenn dir diese Episode gefallen hat, folge mir doch gerne beim Podcast-Dealer deines Vertrauens, damit du auch die nächste Folge nicht verpasst. Du bekommst die ganze Staffel als kostenloses Abo unter anderem bei Spotify, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music, Deezer, Soundcloud, YouTube, dem Podcast-Portal von Google oder natürlich über meine Homepage theblockofrock.com. Höre dir dort auch die bereits veröffentlichten Stories an, denn jede Woche gibt es hier neues Futter. Und vor allem... Erzähle es deinen Freunden und teile die frohe Kunde auf Social Media. Alles klar? Dann hören wir uns ja wieder beim nächsten Mal. Bis dahin, keep on rocking!